Thank you for your presence. Father, we love you. Lick your finger and say, I'm on fire. In Jesus' name, amen. The last couple of weeks, last week in particular, we really, really dealt very heavily into obeying God. <laughs> obeying God has been uh, a missing link in many believers' lives because we're in a society that's full of grace. And unfortunately, the grace being misunderstood, believers are not pushing themselves to an excellent walk. Some believers are just saying, I'm, I'm okay, God loves me, I'm okay just getting into heaven. But today I want to look at the Old Testament, not for bondage, but for strength of consecration. You know what God told the children of Israel when he, when he first met them? He said something really, really strange. He told the men, come not nigh your wives. In other words, you're going to need full strength to be mine. So he told everybody when he first met them, wash your clothes. Don't touch your wives. Because when, when you come to me, you're going to need all your strength. And, you know, so I want to I look at how can we as believers hear properly from God? Amen. The problem, I've, I, I'm going to give you the beginning and I'm going to give you the end in the beginning. The problem that I've seen is that believers are not living right. So they're busy looking for direction. See, they're so busy looking for direction because they're not living right. When you see what the Word of God says, once you live right, nothing comes out of the way. Wow. See, when you're living right, you don't lose stuff. <laughs> and so many times, you, you, you know, you're praying and asking for things, but they're not going to come because there is a misalignment within us. And what happens is the Old Testament, we have to be wise with the Old Testament. The Bible says that uh, a, 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 a good teacher takes from the old and the new. But we do not use the Old Testament to go under law. We do not use it to be righteous, though we can use it to do what's right. I believe even in our nation, the problem we're having with uh, crime is because they have laws for Christians being applied to hellions. Where if you go to Israel, you go to the Middle East, even Russia, they have laws for fallen man. And see, and those laws will keep your flesh in check. But when you have a sinner with society's laws of grace on them, that sin is going to go buck wild. Anybody understood what I said? So we have to be careful as Christians that we do not take the law of God and apply it to us too. Even though we're under grace, some of our walk is sloppy because we never met the God of consecration. Many people misunderstand Jesus because he was talking to a people that, that he would, forgive me for using the word assume, but assume wanted to live for God. So they mistake the word love for total acceptance. Come on. Come on. They think just because Jesus loves them, he totally accepts them. He's the one that said, if you don't believe, you're already condemned. How's that about total acceptance? <laughs> but I want to talk to you that are a believer, that are praying, but not following instructions. And it's very, very easy for us because Jesus taught prayer as a means to receive. See, it's easy when Jesus says, ask, seek, knock, to think, oh, Santa Claus is in town. But not realizing he's telling his people to ask, 
knock and seek. People that have a consecrated life, meaning that they're holy. Now, what does it mean, holy? Separated unto God's purpose. Amen. Holy doesn't mean you don't sin. You get what I'm saying? Holy means possessed by. See? We don't sin because Christ is in us, but we're holy because we belong to God. Amen. That's where people don't get it. Children that are born to safe parents are born holy. They're not born saved, but they're born holy. Anybody heard me? Anything that you dedicate to God becomes holy. Amen. Your dog, your cat, you can dedicate them to God and they be holy dogs. They're not saved. Anybody hear me? So you and I, we're holy. We belong to God, but we need to show that. Amen. And the Old Testament gives you that. It gives you a better edge than the New Testament because the New Testament is assuming you are. And we have preachers that don't live a consecrated life, so they're teaching people to live as loose as possible. Yes, yes. That's true. Because they themselves don't want the consecrated life that Jesus said we should walk in. I don't know about you, but if I got married, I would not want 14 people to sleep with my wife before me. <laughs> Come on, help me, three of you. Or if you was going to eat a steak, somebody ate, like Eugene took a bite, then regurgitated it. And then Luciano regurgitated, you know, come on. You, 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 see, that's not holy. <laughs> that's not clean. That does not belong to you. So when we don't live a consecrated life, you're going to be seeking direction without living right, and you're never going to get direction. Because if you have direction, everything lines up. I will withhold no good thing to them that ask me for stuff. No, for them that just walk upright. So many of us are looking for stuff and you're not going to find it because it's all in your walk. Yeah, that went over your head. And I wrote this. Living right is the clearest path to hearing and receiving direction from God. If you're living right, God has no problem talking to you. But if you're all over the place, and can, can I just be honest with you? Don't, don't lift your hand if you still smoke weed. But if, if, if you have drugs in your system, any kind of drugs in your system, it's going to talk to you. It's a spirit. It talks. It wants to have fellowship. The Bible says evil communication corrupts good manners. Anything that you talk to is your companion. Why do you think dogs are so loyal? People talk to them. Hello, Muffin. Hi. <laughs> you, you actually give yourself through conversation to things. Your remote control, you ever lose your remote control, you almost lose your mind. Where's my remote? Where's? As if you were talking to it. See, because that little idol opens you up to that world on that box. Oof. Where's my remote? And you see, it's funny, but check yourself. Because you communicate with that box. That box is talking to you. Uh -huh. That TV is talking to you. And so whatever you're communing with, it becomes your companion. Okay. Right. We, don't, we, don't, we don't understand that companionship can become idolatry in God's eyesight. That's why he even said you should not love mother, father, sister, brother more than him. Yeah. Yes, yes, amen. 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 Right. He's a jealous God. Yes, yes. You see, but looking at God's word from the Old Testament gives us a better sense of holy consecration, which is the assumed gold of God's people. It's God's assumed gold that you want to be holy and consecrated. You want people to be able to look at you and say, that's how God's children would act. Amen. Not, well, God knows my heart. Right. Or telling people, you too religious. You know, no, let me look at you. Let me see if, if that's what Jesus would be doing. Jesus never made an excuse. 
One time they, they try to blame Jesus for drinking. You know, he said, they say I'm drinking. Just because I walk and hang around sinners, they say I'm a gluttonous. I'm not a gluttonous. I'm not drinking. They said it. All right. See? They said it. See, everyone is watching you. And they're saying something. And the Bible says the devil is the accuser of the brethren. If he's going to say something, let it be like Job. Does Job fear God for naught? See, if the devil's going to talk about you, let them say, let me get him. Instead of God saying, get off of him already. <laughs> that went over some of your head. Yes. Can I go real quick? Please, one person. Amen. I want to go real quick because this is 16 pages. <laughs> We're looking at God's word. Ready? See, when you're gonna, we're going to look at God's word to get a better sense of holy consecration. Consecration means separated for God's purposes. How many of you here have ever consecrated? Just three of you. That's the problem with the rest of y'all. You are supposed to be consecrated. <laughs> Your whole life is supposed to be consecrated unto God. The life I live, remember a couple of weeks ago, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for me. You are consecrated. Amen. Now watch this. I'm going to get into some, some, some deep stuff. And those of you that have a lot of money, please don't be afraid to give it. <laughs> Giving to God. Ready? Naima, I'm glad you got a pen out because this is important. Giving to God. And living right before him is central in knowing whether you heard from him or not. I'll do it one more time. Giving to God and living right before him are central in knowing whether you heard from him or not. If you have no guilt with your giving and no guilt with your living, then you'll know whether you heard from God or not. But when there's a little bit of guilt, it clouds the hearing. You start making up stuff. Amen. Charles, that would be a good place for the drums. <laughs> when we're not living right, we make up stuff. We start saying God is okay with me. We start saying it's all right. It don't take all that. We start hearing all kinds of things. Come on, help me. Six of you that don't want to go into pri prison. But when your giving is right and your living is right, there is no confusion that you're going to hear clearly from God. You don't have to make nothing up. 